Howdy! This is Caucasian Mark, the whitest dude on the internet, and today we're talking about something super sexy. We're talking about pseudo classes. If that's not sexy, I don't know what it is, and I don't want to know what it is. And pseudo classes are neat, right? Because we could make elements on our page um, change as we interact with them, or we could change their um, state that they're currently in. Um, it's just kind of a way of manipulating. Um, certain elements and even um, aspects within elements, um, which is really cool. So as you can see, I have right here, I have uh, this um, awesome poem. Let me refresh this down here. The but is what, but, but, but. I type this out um, because I think it's an, an innovative um, piece of poetry, but also because I want to show some examples of stuff uh, regarding pseudo classes. So let's move up in here. Awesome. So I have this style up here. I'm keeping it as such. I'm just spacing it out just because I want it to be separate from everything else that's going on. So what we down, have down here is we have um, four butts, right? Awesome stuff. Um, and we can see that they're all italicized here within this P tag. Okay, cool. Nothing new really going on there, right? But say we want to, I don't know, select the um, first instance of, I guess you'd say, but in there. Um, what we have to think about now is how do we go about doing that? Because there's four of them in there, and is there a way we could say we want the, the first one? Could we say we want the last one? Could we say we want the second or third? And yes, we can. But one important thing before we go on is we have to know that all of these i tags are children of this p tag. So you can think of this as like the adult and these are all coming from the adult here, right? You wouldn't have um, text that's italicized without text there that comes from um, the P tag. So this may be a little kind of odd at first, but let me show you this in practice. So we're going to uh, have P, which is our selector. Our next selector, which is going to be I, because so we want to look at the italics tag. We could select first child here. Awesome. It knows I want to do that. And then we could do color blue. Come down here and it selects blue. So if we back up and go into here, we can see this is the first child. Maybe confusing, I don't know, uh, you may think of arguments of why it shouldn't be called a child. Well, regardless of what the name and terminology is, this is how we have to think about it. This is the first appearance of the word but inside of the p tag, right? So say we wanted to do something else like um, you know, last child. Save that. Come into here. And now we can see that we have the last instance of but that's highlighted in blue. Well, let's say that um, we wanted to do um, the second one, right? So we could come in and do something along the lines of this. Nth child, let's do three. And then we could see right there that the third one, one, two, three, is but, it's blue. Now keep in mind that in, typically in computer science you start at zero, right? So right here we have to remember that in CSS that's not necessarily going to be the case. One, this is uh, considered the first instance, the first child. Um, I guess that it might have went that way maybe because it would be weird to say this is my zeroth child that actually exists. I don't know why. We have to keep in mind that in CSS that we're starting at 1 rather than at 0. So that's pretty cool as well. So there's other things we could do on top of that. So say we want to do, um, let's just do that. And let's just keep that P tag. And let's do something else that may, uh, hopefully it doesn't break it. We could do something like hover. I think I don't think Safari will handle this very well, but we could do something like font size, um, 70 pixels. So I think I've tried this before previously, and it doesn't work all that well. All right, awesome. It's handling it today. For some reason, it flickers back and forth some days. But we can see that when we hover here, the thing that's changing is the, the font size is increasing, and when we move away from it, it goes back to 45. And now this is following the same syntax here, right? We have our selector, 
then we have the colon, and then we have the pseudo class we want to employ here. But what about, say, we have um, something like class, and then we have, I can't even spell today, pseudo, pseudo stuff. Let's just go ahead and do that. We could come down into here and still do, hopefully I didn't misspell anything, pseudo stuff, and it still works. Because you could use that class selector right here, and it works just as fine the same way. So there's no weird holdups where you know you can only select a, a basic element. You could make uh, classes as well and target those. So rather than targeting a whole tag up here, you know, and trying to figure out how to problem solve that way, you can make specific classes or IDs and come in and then use pseudo classes to style it up accordingly however you want to. Now there's a whole lot of these uh, online. This is kind of just a generic way to show you, or an intro way, I guess, to show you how to deal with some of them. Um, it's Caucasian Mark. Like, share, subscribe, contribute, and I'll see you in the next video. Leave any comments if you have any questions.